In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear parishioners and friends, once again the pandemic has separated us, but at the same time, God has got his own plan. He has at least brought us together in prayer and in worship. So at this juncture, let us pray for ourselves, pray for all our families, and pray for the whole world, and especially for the people who are affected by this pandemic, and pray for all those who are suffering, that God will have the strength and healing done to them. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with the holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Spirit came into me and made me stand up, and I heard the Lord speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to the rebels who have turned against me. Till now, they and their ancestors have been in revolt against me. The sons are defiant and obstinate. I am sending you to them to say, The Lord says this, Whether they listen or not, this set of rebels shall know there is a prophet among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. To you I have lifted my eyes, you who dwell in the heavens. My eyes are like the eyes of slaves on the hands of their Lord. Response. Our eyes are fixed fixed on on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Like the eyes of a servant on the hand of his mistress, so our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he show us his mercy. Response. Our Our eyes eyes are fixed fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed, all too full is our soul with the scorn of the rich, with the proud man's disdain. Response. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. The second letter is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. In view of the extraordinary nature of these revelations, to stop me from getting too proud, I was given a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan to beat me and stop me from getting too proud. About this thing I have pleaded with the Lord three times for it to leave me. But he has said, My grace is enough for you, 
my power is at its best in weakness. So I shall be very happy to make my weaknesses my special boast, so that the power of Christ may stay over me. And that is why I am quite content with my weaknesses and with insults, hardships, persecutions, and the agonies I go through for Christ's sake. For it is when I am weak that I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He sent me to bring the good news to the poor. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to our Lord. Jesus went to his hometown and his disciples accompanied him. With the coming of the Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue and most of them were astonished when they heard him. They said, where did the man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been granted him? And these miracles that are worked through him. This is the carpenter, surely the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and Jude and Simon. His sisters too, are they not here with us? And they would not accept him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is only despised in his own country, among his own relations, and in his own house. And he could work no miracles there, though he cured a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, some time ago I happened to meet an eld elderly woman. She told me that one of her daughters had stopped speaking to her and wouldn't even allow her kids to visit her. She said that most painful thing is that she does not know the reason why her daughter rejected her. Recently, her grandchild got married, but she was not invited to the wedding. She felt really rejected and at times depressed and sometimes irritated and sometimes she gets wild. Rejection can easily turn into anger and even bitterness, particularly hurtful to be rejected by one's own people. Probably all of us have experienced a little of this. When we want to help someone but our help was refused, we feel frustrated and helpless. When we meet with rejection, we may be tempted to say, oh, that's it. We may decide not to help or care anymore. Rejection is too painful. Jesus didn't react like this. Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. He greatly desired to help his own people in his own town. But they rejected him. They don't want him. 
he was saddened by their way of approach towards him but not angered in the gospel passage we find jesus teaching in the synagogue and all the people are astonished when they heard jesus speaking because they were astonished not because jesus was working wonders but they wanted to know how could jesus do this where do the power come from so they refused to accept jesus just because he was one among them and he was with them brought up so the refusal of jesus is something like that of the first reading that we had in the first reading the people refused to listen to the prophet ezekiel because they did not want to listen to him so also in our lives we sometimes don't listen to the people with whom we have grown up this could be out of jealousy or whatever feelings ill feelings that we have against that person why they have been so prejudiced against jesus one reason was that he was too human they knew his mother mary and all his relatives for the jews jews of his town their main question was how how can he do that so how could jesus be from god they were thinking all that they were expecting a messiah who would destroy the roman power and jesus is brought up like any one of them and he was as weak as like any one of them so they thought it is not going to work with him because they expected a messiah they hoped for someone more powerful more influence and more political and that was not found in the life of jesus so that could be the one reason that they rejected jesus and another reason could be that they did not believe that one of their own people could come and reveal god's message the message of love to them their image of god was that of a god who punished bad people and rewarded good people but jesus revealed himself as a loving compassionate forgiving god and that was not the thing that these people expected they expected a messiah who would be very powerful to destroy their enemies and that is not seen in the life of jesus so that could be the other reason why these people rejected jesus they felt they knew him therefore he could not tell them anything new jesus like ezekiel runs into the resistance of those who refuse to hear the word of god which invites them to leave their old security and change their ways of life they felt secured in their image of god and the religious beliefs they were used to so they are not willing to accept the teachings of jesus because his teachings are something new to them this can be equally true of us too
if any one of us wants to take Jesus seriously, then we will be challenged to let go of all that is not life-giving in our lives, of our false securities. He will invite us to repent of any unforgiving attitude in our hearts, any unjust business dealings, any relationships or behavior which are contrary to the calling we have from God. Even today, we find a lot of people who reject the teachings of the church. When people display contempt or outright rejection of us as Christians, when we face these types of people, let us not focus only on the sinful aspects of those people, but we should be like Ezekiel in the first reading, Paul in the second reading, and Jesus. We should have the courage to keep on witnessing to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us, as St. Paul says in the second reading, I love the grace of power of God to use our weaknesses as a church to purify all of us. And that should be our goal. And that should be our intention. We should not bother what is happening around us. Rather, we should allow the grace of God to work in us. Then we do really understand what God is expecting us from of us, or what Jesus is trying to teach us, and what the prophets are trying to tell us. Then we understand the teachings of church, then we follow the true Christian ways of life in our life. And for that grace, during this Eucharistic celebration, let us pray. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, today is observed in the Catholic Church as National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Catholic Council Day and begins NADOC Week, National Aboriginals and Islanders Day Observance Committee, both with a common theme, Heal Country. May the Catholic Church in Australia be attentive to her 130,000 Indigenous members and embrace them with pastoral care, promote their leadership in the church, 
and honour their rich heritage, culture and spirituality. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. May all Aboriginal and Torres Strait citizens be treated with respect, their vulnerable youth receive encouragement, and the wisdom of their elders be listened to. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. May this year's theme, Heal Country, be embraced by all in this continent so that we can learn from the rich connections and knowledge of country of our Indigenous Australians and work towards a more sustainable planet, our common home. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May those who give witness by word and action to Jesus in our parishes, communities and schools, in our families, organisations and health providers, not be discouraged when their message is despised or rejected, but keep themselves centred upon him. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. May each one of us, as we struggle with our weaknesses and temptations, draw hope from St Paul, who came to understand that God's grace was enough, that God's power is at its best in weakness. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. May the over three million people who have died in this pandemic too often alone and in fear, find in God the source of eternal peace and joy. We also remember those who are sick, especially Mick Samuel, and those who've recently died, Leonie Rowe, Bette Pacey, Maria Tran, Brian Tracy, Patricia Henderson, Joan Barton, Patrick Heffron. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Our eyes are fixed on you, O Lord, as we plead for your mercy, that with a prophet's heart, each of us will witness to your salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received. The bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, 
but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this kiss we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life of the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Antony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed, Ma blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coised to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and founded by divine teaching, we are there to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that he should enter under my roof, roof but, but only say the word, the word and, and my, my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. Now let's all join Pope Francis in praying to Our Lady, help of the sick, in imploring her protection during the COVID-19 pandemic. O oh Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, help of the sick. At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with a steadfast faith. Your salvation of the Roman people, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide, so that as you did at the Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. 
Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our suffering upon himself and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection. O Holy Mother of God, do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gaze, gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. My dear families and friends, we know we are all going through the difficult moments, but God has got a plan for all of us. Thank you all for joining us together, though in spirit, in this Eucharistic celebration. Let us continue to pray for one another and for the world that we will be soon coming together to celebrate this Eucharist once again as one community and one family. Thank you.